I'm Sophia. I'm so grateful to be teaching you guys yoga here today. I'll be taking you through a sun salutation A. We'll deconstruct it. So when you're ready, just come to the top of your mat. You'll be standing like this. Um, I'm just going to start here so I can show you the foot placement. So in yoga, you'll start with your feet in parallel, hip width distance apart, and you want to lift your inner arches, but simultaneously hug your outer ankles in. So there's that engagement of drawing up energy from the earth. Then you'll inhale through your nose and reach your arms up, lift your gaze. As you exhale through the nose, take your hands down through the center. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, going up at the speed of your breath. Exhale, down the center. As you inhale, reach up, but keep your shoulders down. Spiral your outer triceps in. Exhale, some CTE. That means standing in balance or steadiness. Inhale, arms up. This time, as you take your hands down, bend your knees and cascade down forward over your legs. We move at the speed of the breath here. As you inhale, take a halfway lift with a flat spine. This is called Ardha Uttanasana. As you exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Hands can press on either side of the palms here, or if the hamstrings are a little tighter, your fingertips can rest on your shins. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Two more times. As you inhale, there's a tendency with longer hamstrings to dump into the lower back, we want to sew the upper ribs together, keep the core engaged and the lumbar is buoyant. In Ashtanga, which is a more traditional style of yoga, they'll encourage you to lift your neck. In Vinyasa, we want a long straight line from the tailbone to the base of the skull because this is your cervical spine. We'll meet in a forward fold. Soften into the knees and as you inhale, slowly bone by bone, Start to roll all the way up to stand. Inhale, shoulders up to the ears. And as you exhale, draw the shoulder blades down the back and reach beyond the fingertips. The downward flow of energy through the feet into the earth is a panavayu. And as you inhale, you reach beyond the fingertips. This is vyanavayu, the outward flow of energy. Exhale. Cascading down, belly to thighs. Your core here is what pulls your belly closer to your thighs and eventually the hip bones will stack over the heels. Inhale to take a halfway lift with a flat back. Exhale to fold. Inhale through the nose. Use your whole inhale to get there. Exhale to fold. Plant the palms and step back to downward facing dog. Your feet should be hip width distance in downward facing dog and you're trying to get your heels to the ground. When you have longer hamstrings, there's also a tendency to try and feel into that juicy stretch by dumping into the lower back. We don't wanna do that. We wanna rotate the triceps out and around and continue that motion of sewing the upper ribs together while shortening the distance between the hip bones and the low floating ribs. Take another long inhale through the nose and out through the nose. Try to elongate your exhale to five or maybe six counts. As you next inhale, lower the knees down. Use your whole breath to come to tabletop on all fours. In tabletop, you wanna try and also rotate the triceps out and around so that the veiny part of your elbow is not facing inward to one, each up, to one another. They're trying to rotate slightly forward to the top of your mat. As you inhale, drop your belly and lift your gaze. This is cow pose. Use your whole exhale to arch your back up to the sky. This is cat pose. 
Just working through maybe four or five more, these go in a pair. Use the whole inhale to come into cow and the whole exhale to come to cat. Squeeze the core, squeeze the glutes. In cat, you're tense, like looking like an angry cat. And in cow, you're taking on the slow, smooth, relaxed attributes of the animal, the cow. And then come to find a neutral spine in tabletop. I'm going to introduce you to you our resting pose, child's pose. So take your toes together to touch. There are two ways you can take the knees wide and sit back on the heels to get more of a stretch in your adductors, your inner thighs, and let the forehead come to the ground for a more passive form of the pose. The more traditional form of child's pose is to have your knees together touching. This is more compressive on your visceral body and you will keep your neck long, tucking your chin to your chest. Your forehead will not be on the ground here. Your ears will be um, between your upper arm bones and the upper arm bones spiral in. Keeping your tailbone glued to your heels, you walk your palms forward, trying to get a millimeter more space in between each vertebrae. Deep inhale for four and out for six. As you inhale, rise from child's pose back to tabletop on all fours. I'll introduce to you now a pose called chaturanga, which we always go through to build strength. It will be more difficult here if there's a straight diagonal line from your knee joint to your shoulder joint. If you know that bicep strength is not your forte, then you'll try and send the weight of your pelvis to be directly above your knees. This puts the bone, the weight of the pelvic bone into the knees instead of the arms. So just choose what your body needs. Continue rotating your, tri rotating your triceps out and around. And as you inhale, shift your shoulders forward over your fingertips, push the floor away and lower to the point where the upper arm bones are parallel to the earth. This is chaturanga, this is your landing pose. Make sure the shoulder blades are drawing down the back. You're not collapsing, you're trying to make a nice little square. Then lower down the belly all the way to the earth. Make a pillow for your head. There can be a gap for your nose. And then just wriggle the pelvis from side to side. Press your palms back in line with your waist and as you inhale, pull your heart forward, coming to baby cobra. Exhale, third eye to the mat. Inhale, baby cobra. And exhale through the nose to lower. Inhale to cobra. Then ground down into your palms and your knees and press back through all fours, all the way to child's pose. Deep inhale for four. And out for six. As you inhale, rise back to all fours. Tuck the toes and on an exhale breath, Pressing back to your downward facing dog. Look back between your arms and check that your feet are hip width distance. Push the floor away with your palms. You want to imagine there's like a sling tugging your pelvis up and back to where the ceiling meets the wall. Deep inhale for four. And out through the nose for six. Look forward and take as many steps as you need to get to your hands at the top of your mat. Feet can be nice and bent here. When you get there, inhale, take your halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana with a flat spine. Exhale to fold Uttanasana. Ground down into the heels as you rise to stand. Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, 
Sama City. Inhale, reach up, look up. And as you exhale, diving forward, know that you can bend your knees if you need to. Be guided by your inhale breath to rise. Ada Uttanasana. Exhale to fold, plant the palms. Inhale, Ada Uttanasana, flattening the spine. Plant the palms and step back to downward facing dog. Next, inhale, lower down the knees, coming forward onto all fours. Shift your shoulders forward as you inhale so that the shoulders are over the fingertips. Push the floor away as you lower down to Chaturanga. Inhale, Cobra, baby Cobra. Exhale, third eye to the mat. Inhale, baby cobra. And exhale to lower. You're squeezing your triceps here so the elbows don't go out to the side ever. The elbows are always staying vertically over the wrist. Inhale to rise and then press back. This time to a tucked toed child's pose. So this is your transition into downward facing dog. Removing a little of the rest and the wraps from last time. Take a deep breath in through your nose for four. Out for six. Look forward and begin your journey to your hands at the top of your mat. Take as many steps as you need to get there. When you get there, inhale, halfway lift, flatten the spine. Exhale to fold. Ground down into your heels as you rise all the way up to stand. Exhale, Sama City. Take your hands to your hips and just turn to the long edge of your mat and take a wide step to the side. Here you wanna be one leg's length distance apart. Then reach your arms out to the side and you still wanna be sewing the upper ribs together and shortening the distance between the hip bones and the ribs and reaching beyond the fingertips. Take an inhale to prepare and as you exhale, starting to come forward, hands can go all the way to the ground. Maybe walking them back if you need to. If your um, head is able to touch the ground here, then just make the feet go a little bit closer together so that the head can't touch the ground. Deep breath in for four. And out for six. As you inhale, take a halfway lift with a flat spine and reach your arms out to the side. Draw energy up from the earth and ride your next inhalation back to verticality. Rotate your right toes to the back of your mat. Here you wanna have your right foot parallel to the long edge of your mat and your left foot angled at about 45 degrees. So the toes are pointing slightly forward. Make sure you're engaging both VMOs so the quads are lifting. And then if your front leg is 12 o'clock on a imaginary clock around us, then your hip bones are at about 5, 2 and 10, 2. Then you rotate your ribs or your lungs to be at a quarter 2. And then reach your arms to the top and back of your mat. Reach beyond your fingertips and then start to reach forward as far forward as you can trying to find length through your undercarriage when you can go no further forward slice your right arm to be supported against your right leg use your bottom arm as a lever here if this is too much for you on your obliques it can be quite strong you can always lessen this by taking the hands to the hips 
That way your femur will support the weight of your torso. However, if you're quite open, feel free to take the hand to the ground. Try not to collapse the length you've created through your right side body. Maybe lifting the gaze to challenge your balance. Make sure you continue pulling up both kneecaps. You're trying to stretch your mat for stability. Use an inhale to rise. As you exhale, feet come back to parallel. Deep breath in and exhale, reach beyond the fingertips. Turn your left toes to face the top of your mat and then angle your back foot to be at 45 degrees. Lift energy up from the earth and lift both kneecaps. And as you exhale, reach beyond your fingertips. Your arms are at shoulder height, like they're resting on a level body of water. Start to reach forward to the top of your mat. When you can go no further forward, slice your left arm to be directly under your shoulder. So all the joints are aiming to be stacked here. Reach beyond your fingertips. Pose is called Trikonasana, Triangle Pose. So it gives you what you need, this pose. It can be quite a strength pose for your core. If you've got tighter adductors, it's going to really stretch your adductors. As dancers, however, this will primarily feel like a strength building or a yang pose for you. As you inhale, come back up. And exhale, take the hands back to the hips. Look forward to the top of your mat and step to the top of your mat. Take your toes together to touch and fingertips graze the earth. Sit down like you're sitting in a chair. Utkatasana, chair pose. So here you wanna aim to send your knees back over your hips and your hips are trying to be down in line with your knees. Then your upper arm bones are trying to be in line with your ears and you reach beyond your fingertips. Continue sewing your upper ribs together. As you exhale, graze the earth, reach the fingertips back. And as you inhale, come back to Utkatasana. Exhale, hands to the earth. Uttanasana, your forward fold. As you inhale, exhale to fold, Uttanasana. Step back to downward facing dog. As you inhale, lower the knees, coming forward. And as you exhale, press down through Chaturanga onto your bellies. Inhale, Cobra. Exhale to lower. So you always have options of your journey back to downward facing dog. You can inhale through Cobra, press all the way back to child's pose on an exhale. Inhale to rise to all fours, tuck the toes and exhale to downward facing dog. If you want to take a more direct path and that was too easy for you, You'll inhale to Cobra, press into the palms, tuck the toes, press into the knees, and then travel back to Downward Facing Dog, skipping Child's Pose. So we'll just ripple forward and do that one more time together, the second option. Inhale forward, exhale down through Chaturanga onto your belly. Inhale, Cobra, tuck the toes, press into the palms and the knees, and exhale back to Downward Facing Dog. Deep inhale for four, and out for six. Slowly begin to lower the knees down, untuck the toes, and on an exhalation, press back to your resting pose, child's pose. Slowly begin to roll up bone by bone. Here we leave our chin connected to our chest. 
like a spinal massage, reconstructing each vertebrae. This pose is Virasana, hero pose, sitting on the heels. Then just lower onto your hip and swing your legs around to the front. You may need to shuffle forward on your mat. Curl the toes back towards the face and plant the palms on either side of the hips. Draw the shoulder blades down the back and sew the upper ribs together. This pose is Dandasana. Reach the arms up to the sky, but keep the shoulders away from the ears. And as you exhale, reach towards your toes with a flat spine. If you can't reach the toes, the shins, knees, whatever is available to you is fine. Initially, you wanna tug the heart forward with a strong, straight spine, and then you relax down into the yin variation of the pose. Um, if the forward fold is not available to you, you can also just interlace the knuckles and place it on the base of the skull to get a nerve stretch up and down your back. However, if a lot of you I know would have more open hamstrings, you can get deeper into the stretch by taking your palm like you're going to shut a door or high five someone and then reach for your wrist, tugging your wrist so you get a nice stretch through your right side body. Try to relax into the pose. Pashimot Asana. Forward folds have a very stimulating effect on our reticular activation system. It helps to cool and calm the central nervous system right down. And you'll keep reaching towards the toes, engage the core, and begin to roll down bone by bone onto your back, slowly like you don't want to. There will come a point as you roll down where your body naturally wants to speed up like you're losing control down a hill. Don't lose control, this is a deficit in your core strength. So the part where you feel you want to go the, slow, the fastest is actually the part where you need to focus on going the slowest. Try to explore where that area is for you. Then when you arrive, draw the shoulder blades down the back. Setting up for bridge pose. So take your feet to be hip width distance apart and your knees will also be hip width distance apart. You should be able to tickle your heels with the longest finger of your hands. Then posterior tilt the pelvis, so engage your core, tuck your tailbone under and start to curl up bone by bone. We're not only aiming to get the pelvis lifted here, we're also aiming for length, so the tailbone is trying to reach towards the back of the knees to keep spacious in the sacral triangle. If you'd like to make it harder, you can interlace your knuckles and cinch your shoulder blades a little more together. Then release the bind if you took it and slowly begin to lower down, bone by bone. Take the soles of your feet together and the knees nice and wide for Supta Baddha Konasana. Taking your left hand on your heart and your right hand on your belly. Just notice that your belly rises slower and for longer than your chest. Then guide your hands to the outside of your thighs to draw them together, setting up for round two bridge pose. You can either stay with the same variation you did last time, or we'll do bridge breathing as an add-on if you want to synchronize the ascent of your arms pelvis with the inhalation. The arms will rise to the ceiling and then over the head at the speed of your inhale. And when it's time for you to exhale, begin to reach the arms back the way they came as you roll down through the spine, bone by bone. Two more times with the breath or just holding static bridge. A 
and you'll hug your knees into your chest. Just massage both kidneys down into the earth. Plant your feet back down as though you're setting up for bridge pose again, but we're not. You're gonna take your left leg to the sky bent, like you could stand it on the ceiling. So the sole of the foot is parallel to the ceiling. Take your left elbow and use it to nudge your knee out to the side. Your hand can either grab your ankle or maybe piece fingers around the big toe. Tug your knee down towards the earth, but keep your right hip and glute glued to the ground. This is half happy baby pose. You can use your right hand as a self assist to keep that right side of body grounded. From here, you can begin to elongate and re-bend your left leg. If this is not deep enough for you, you can access a psoas stretch by straightening your right leg forward. Then hug your left knee into your body with both hands. Transfer it across to your right hand and extend your left arm to the left. Roll onto your outer right hip, guiding your left knee across your body for a supine twist. If you wish to lessen the degree of the twist, you can bend your bottom leg as well. Every inhale, the spine lengthens. And as you exhale, your right hand can help you twist into the space that that breath created. The inhale, you'll naturally back out of the stretch ever so slightly and as you exhale, deepen. Then ground down into both forearms using some gentle core to bring the knees back through center. Give yourself a little squeeze. This pose is called egg of the universe. Nice and compressive on your visceral body like child's pose was. And then setting up in our bridge setup for the other side. Feet hip width distance. Take your right leg to the sky. Use your right elbow to just nudge that leg out of the way. Grabbing your ankle, or if it's available to you, piece fingers around the big toe. Um, you don't wanna grab the, the big toe with the piece fingers at the cost of curling the tailbone off the ground. So only reach to the big toe with the piece fingers if you can keep your lower back on the ground. Otherwise, it's not a neutralizing pose in your lower back anymore. Start to extend and re-bend your right leg. Then maybe extending the left leg forward to access your psoas stretch. And then start to snuggle your right thigh bone in towards your body with both hands. Transfer your right leg to your left hand and outstretch your right arm to the side. Start to roll onto your outer left hip. It's important here to keep your right shoulder blade on the ground. Every inhale, the spine lengthens and every exhale, twist yourself a little deeper. Try to mirror what you did on the other side though. So if you did bend that bottom leg, please do so. and then inhale back through center. Give yourself a little squeeze. And then full happy baby. So elbows inside the knees and feet are trying to be parallel to the sky here. Either grabbing the ankles or if it's available, piece fingers around the big toes, making sure not to curl the tailbone off the ground. Tailbone reaches forward to the top of your mat. Then if you wish to deepen, you'll push your knees away using your elbows and tug your knees also down to the outside your ribs towards the earth. From here, if you still wanna go deeper, you can again play with extending one leg more and bending one leg more like you did in the half variation. Just allowing all of that freshly oxygenated blood to drain back to your vital organs before you elongate the legs to the top two corners of the mat, outstretch the arms for your final resting pose, Shavasana. Just 
taking a few moments here to breathe, feeling the effects of your practice circulate through your body. Transfer the weight of your body to the ground. And when you're ready, just wriggling your fingers and toes. Deepen your breath. Reach your arms above your head. Take a nice stretch and then roll to your side using your arm like a pillow. Begin to make your way up to a seat. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I'm so grateful to be here and I can't wait to see you guys at the next one.